In today's episode of The Card Logs, we will be looking at an old school boss monster called Jinzo, which is probably the only old school main deck boss monster which still sees competitive play in the modern era. Jinzo simply has the effect where it's a 2400 attack level 6 monster that negates the effects of all trap cards while it's on the field, and prevents the activation of trap cards. Now what's unique about Jinzo was that it came out so early in the game's lifespan, all the way back in 2002, which was the year Yu-Gi-Oh launched in the TCG. In that time period, the maximum attack for level 5 or 6 monsters was 2500. And 1 tribute monsters were kind of the king of early Yu-Gi-Oh. As you can get a really high attack monster on the field for only 1 resource, instead of spending a massive 2 resources on a tribute summon a level 7 or higher monster. Where at the time, there were almost no good targets where it was viable to tribute 2 monsters. So, the name of the game in early Yu-Gi-Oh were single tributes, and Jinzo, with its 2400 attack, was one of the strongest single tribute monsters. Not the strongest, that was definitely Summon Skull, with its impressive 2500 attack point value. But for only being slightly weaker than the Summon Skull, Jinzo had an incredibly power effect, where it just shut down one third of the cards in the game. Getting a Jinzo on the field could sometimes just win you the game, if your opponent didn't have a non-trap card out to it. So immediately upon its introduction to the game, it saw competitive play. The decks that it saw play in were so numerous that it was kind of a staple card, in the same way as Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. If a deck had the capabilities to support one tribute, they would probably play a copy of Jinzo. If not in the main deck, then at least in the side deck against a trap-heavy deck. And as the metagame progressed, Jinzo didn't really stop seeing as much play until the Synchro era, where decks were moving away from getting out big boss monsters from the main deck, and moving into the modern era of special summoning a whole bunch of smaller monsters in order to combo out extra deck monsters. But even then, it would still occasionally see play in Frog Monarch decks, Gadgets, and Mermels all the way until 2014, when they released a new card at the end of the year called Denko Seka. Denko Seka is a level 4 monster which has the effect where this card cannot be special summoned, and while you control no set spell or trap cards, neither player can set spell or trap cards nor activate set spell or trap cards on the field. So basically, Denko Seka was a level 4 version of Jinzo that didn't require a tribute summon. It could also shut down trap cards completely since trap cards do need to be set on the field first before you can activate them, and was a lot easier to use in most decks, as its restriction on you was pretty easy to play around if you didn't use trap cards. And if you were going to play Jinzo, Jinzo would lock down your trap cards anyway, so it's not really any worse than what Jinzo already did to you. And Denko Seka immediately saw competitive success as soon as it came out, and just like Jinzo, kind of never stopped seeing competitive play ever since it came out. However, with an obviously power crept version of Jinzo in the game, it's kind of surprising that Jinzo did not stop seeing play as well. And funny enough, rarely were Denko Seka or Jinzo played alongside each other. Most decks that would play them would play one or the other, but not both. However, even though Jinzo was still seeing competitive play, it drastically fell in popularity in comparison to Denko Seka, and was kind of slowly being phased out of the meta until 2017. At the tail end of 2016, Paleozoic Dynamiscus and Totally Awesome were released. Paleozoic Dynamiscus completed the Paleozoic engine of being a really good card in their deck, which allowed you to discard a card in order to banish one face-up card in the field. And then if it was in the graveyard, it could be special summoned later as a level 2 aqua type monster. Totally Awesome is a rank 2 monster that requires two level 2 aqua monsters as its materials, and basically has an effect where it can negate the effect of a spell, trap, or monster effect by sending an aqua monster from your hand or field to the graveyard, which will then destroy that card and then set it to your side of the field. So Totally Awesome was a really good Omni Negate, and Paleozoics were a really good trap deck that could easily facilitate Totally Awesome. And what was the best counter to this pure trap deck? Well, a couple of side deck editions of Jinzo. As also in 2017, Zodiacs were a very popular deck, and could pretty easily side in Jinzo with how much tribute fodder they can unintentionally throw on the field. Although it wasn't just Zodiacs, Burning Abyss could make use of it as well, as could Infernoids and Monarch decks. So it was a one-stop shot to shut down a brand new, heavily trap-focused deck. And what about Denko Seka? Well, in the same time period in which Jinzo shot up an incredible popularity, Denko Seka did the exact same thing. It saw about three times as much play as Jinzo in that time period, actually, for basically the exact same reason, and was even played alongside Jinzo occasionally in the side deck. Although after 2017, with the Link era coming in, Jinzo shot down in popularity, still seeing competitive play, but nowhere near as much as early 2017. And that was kind of the history of Jinzo. 
Every year it still sees competitive play as a side deck option, but it's pretty rare and nowhere near as widespread as it used to be, and generally that's because Denko Seka exists, as it kind of takes up the spot as the monster to stop trap cards, if you need to bring out a monster to stop trap cards. Although Jinzo is still pretty impressive for still seeing competitive play after it was power crept. This is something that rarely happens, which is just a testament to how good the original card was. Excellent for pretty much its entire competitive history, but never overpowered enough for the card to need to be banned, as it was only lightly restricted on the ban list every once in a while. And now, let's go over combos with Jinzo from the tip section of Yugipedia. Did you know, if you use the spell card Future Fusion targeting Chimera Tech Overdragon, you can send as many machine type monsters as you want from your deck to the graveyard. So, if you're able to send three copies of Jinzo and three copies of Jinzo Returners, then the field can be swarmed with three copies of Jinzo, as Jinzo Returner has the effect where it can special summon a Jinzo from your graveyard when it's sent to the graveyard. However, the Jinzos will be destroyed during the end phase, so you better find some way to make use of them. Therein concludes tips and combos from the tip section of Yugipedia. Now, let's go over some fun facts about Jinzo. Did you know Jinzo was the first ever effect legend monster card added to Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duels? A legend card in Rush Duels is one that can only be played at one copy per deck. Think of it like a permanent limited restriction, and it basically has the same effects and stats as the original. One tribute monster, 2400 attack, and negates the effects of all trap cards. Jinzo also makes an appearance in Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duels. There's a card for Esperoba, which activates as soon as the duel starts, and gives you the passive effect where your Jinzo monster are unaffected by your opponent's skill cards, and also gives you an effect where once per turn, if you control Jinzo, you can look at one of your opponent's face down cards in their spell and trap card zone, and if it's a trap card, you get to draw one card. However, this isn't the only place where Jinzo gained special attention with Esperoba. Seen as it originally belonged to this character in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, and was subsequently taken from him during a duel with one of the main protagonists of the stories, Joey Wheeler, after it was taken from him, this became the most used card that he obtained from another player during that arc of the anime, and it's pretty easy to see why with how powerful Jinzo is. Even in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime they had to admit Jinzo was powerful, so he made lots of appearances. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, there are a grand total of five skills that directly interact with Jinzo. There's Cosmic Enlightenment, which can be activated each time your life points decrease by 1,000, where during your next draw phase, you get to draw either a random Psychic-type monster or a Jinzo monster from your deck instead of your normal draw. Then there's Cyber Energy Amplified, which has the effect when the Amplifier Equip spell card is equipped to Jinzo, it increases that monster's attack by 500 and allows you to once per turn increase his attack by another 300 points for each equipped spell card attached to it. This is supposed to make Amplifier work more like its anime version, which basically has that same effect. Next, we have Trap Search. This is a skill that can only be used when you control a face-up Jinzo, in which case you can destroy all of your opponent's trap cards. This skill is just like the Amplifier one. It's meant to simulate Jinzo's effect in the anime, where in addition to being able to negate trap cards, it could also destroy trap cards that were on the field and Trap Search was one of the names of his attacks that did this. Then we have Psychic Onslaught, which is a skill that simply adds one to two Jinzos to your deck at the beginning of the duel, which can allow you to have more than three copies of Jinzo in your deck, or to just have any copies at all because a card is kind of hard to get a hold of in that game. And lastly, we have Friends and Foes. This is a skill that is only usable by Dark Side of Dimension Joey, which allows you to increase the attack of Jinzo by 300 points times the number of cards which are also mentioned in this skill with different names. This effect increases permanent and can only be used two times per duel. The other two cards mentioned are also cards in which the anime character Joey won from other duelists during the anime, which is why Jinzo was randomly included alongside the Red-Eyes Black Dragon and the Legendary Fisherman. Jinzo also has a lot of specific support in its own little small archetype. Jinzo has a grand total of four different versions, two of them retrains, a level 7 and rank 6 version of Jinzo, as well as two other versions that are both a stronger and weaker version of itself. In addition, it also has a card which can treat its name as Jinzo and help search the card out of the deck. Jinzo also has a handful of spell cards which interact with it by either searching it out or requiring it to be on the field in order to use their effects, with one of the more infamous ones being Amplifier. Amplifier is a spell card which can only be equipped to Jinzo, its activation and effect cannot be negated, and simply changes the effect of the monster so that it only negates the effects of your opponent's trap cards instead of all of them on the field. So, Jinzo equipped with Amplifier allows you to actually use trap cards yourself. However, that's all it does. In the anime, it also provided Jinzo some extra attack power, which the Duel Link skill helps simulate. However, 
Even though Amplifier is kind of weak as an incredibly specific equip spell card support, it has caused a lot of illegal loops in the past. You see, in Yu-Gi-Oh, if a loop is happening which doesn't result in a change in game state, then whatever you did which would cause that loop would be ruled as an illegal move. Although recently they kind of changed the rules on that so you can just destroy whatever card is causing the loop. But before then, since Amplifier changed the effect of Jinzo itself, what this would mean is if you had Amplifier on your side of the field equipped to a Jinzo, and your opponent stole your Jinzo with some kind of equipped spell card like Snatch Steel for example, then once they gained control of your Jinzo, your opponent would immediately gain its new effect provided by Amplifier, which would make it so they could use trap cards. So if they then activated a continuous trap card that negates all spell cards, like say Imperial Order, or in the example we'll be using Talisman of Spell Sealing, this would then negate the effect of the equipped spell card and send it back to your opponent. And then as soon as it went back to your opponent, since Amplifier has an additional effect where its effects cannot be negated, it would then cause Jinzo to negate your opponent's trap cards again, which would then turn their Snatch Steel live again, and cause them to steal Jinzo again and then it would just repeat infinitely. The reason is because this loop is done in a way where there's no conflicting card effects. It's a pretty linear step of cards negating each other. It just happens in a way that it forms a perfect circle, and will just repeat the same lines of effects going off forever. And since there's no stop to this loop, you can't continue the game, which is what causes the loop to be an illegal loop, because there is no player interaction that happens. This is literally just passive effects interacting with each other. So in the past, you'd have to literally rewind the game before the loop happened, and then you'd be told not to do the loop. However, today you would just destroy Snatch Steel, or whatever was the last card play that caused the loop, and would subsequently break the loop. Although since Amplifier is not a very good card, no one really had to worry about this loop in the actual game, and it was always more of a theoretical thing. Now, for this final section, how could Jinzo be fixed in order to see competitive play in the modern era? The answer to this question is that it does kind of see competitive play. But if we were to change it so that it would see even more play, I think the best way to do that would be to give it some kind of way to special summon itself from the hand. Similar to what the retrain Jinzo the Machine Menace does, where if there is simply a trap card on the field or in either player's graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. However, Jinzo the Machine Menace does have an effect to tribute itself in order to special summon a Jinzo from your hand or graveyard, so it can potentially allow you to go into Jinzo faster, but you still need to search out Jinzo in some way, and Jinzo the Machine Menace doesn't have the effects to negate trap cards itself. It's simply a middleman into going into Jinzo. So if Jinzo instead just had Jinzo the Machine Menace's summoning condition, that would make it 10 times better. As currently, the biggest limitations on Jinzo is the fact that you'd need a tribute to bring it out normally, or you need to cheat it out in some other way, which is why Denko Seka usually sees a lot more play over Jinzo, even though Denko Seka cannot be special summoned at all, and has restrictions on how you can even activate its lockout effect. And with this new effect to special summon itself from the hand, Jinzo would probably get banned because that's too good. Okay, and with that, that concludes the card logs of Jinzo. Now, for future card log episodes, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the topics myself. That way I can work on more than one of them at a time, which should allow them not to take a month to come out. So instead, if you have suggestions for what I should cover next, just leave those down in the comments. Also, make sure to watch the playlist on the other card logs. That's the best way to support this series if you want to see them more frequently. 